Ah, hello. You've uh, caught me packing my uh, rucksack for a trip to Belfast. Sponsored, incidentally, by my friends and members in America. If you wish to show thanks, sponsor a future production, then have a look at the thanks button, bottom right hand corner of this screen. Anyway, what have I got in my rucksack? What am I preparing? Well, uh, got a clean shirt, a spare uh, clean shirt. Now the camera, the camera, that's more important, isn't it? The camera I'm using is the OM5 with the 12 to 45 Pro lens. Can't show it to you at the moment uh, because it's uh, recording this uh, video. Now I shouldn't say this in front of OM system or should we say Olympus anyway, OM system because um, I've got in the rucksack a backup camera. Scientifically you notice uh, packaged in bubble wrap. I'm taking purely as backup it's the EM10 Mark II with the 12 to 50 lens. It's no longer made, but I still think it was a fabulous lens. So there's the gear. You know, I'm not taking the kitchen sink, just taking two cameras, the OM5 and this one. Now, perhaps more importantly, I've uh, done my research. I've got my maps, for example, guidebooks, so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> that's, that's a mystery in itself. Even a book on Ireland, so I can learn a bit about the history, but perhaps the most important thing is an itinerary. Yep, I've done my research. I've got an itinerary here over the next two days. It's in modular form so that I can move it around the various sections around according to the weather. And that, of course, is the big unknown. Now, when I did the photographic holidays, some of you might remember that, the photographic holidays for HF, then each morning behind the bicycle shed, well, I haven't got one here, actually, I don't think I have anyway, but behind the bicycle shed, I would do the sundown. So now, if you would excuse me, I am now going to go off and do the appropriate dance to guarantee that I get lovely, fine weather in Belfast over the next couple of days. From plane to pub, the Crown Liquor Saloon, or Crown Bar, as it is better known, was built in 1826, then known as the Railway Tavern. In 1880, the current owners commissioned Italian craftsmen to create its famous Victorian interior. It suffered damage from bomb blasts during the Troubles, but the National Trust assumed ownership in 1978 and restored it to its former glory. The name Belfast is an anglicised version of an Irish term meaning the sandy ford at the mouth of the River Fawcett, a tributary of the Lavern now hidden from view underneath the city. As a settlement, it dates back over 400 years, but it is not an ancient one. The 1800s saw unmatched industrial growth, including the Harland and Wolf shipyard, which came into being in 1861, where the ill-fated Titanic was built. Belfast has many fine Victorian buildings, and Queen Victoria granted its city status in 1888. 
A decision then was made to build a new city hall, which today is the architectural centerpiece of the city. Its magnificent entrance hall is dominated by a rotunda, photographically a bend-over backwards job, and some striking stained glass in adjoining corridors. Now these are just quick snapshots, handheld, as many people are milling about. I set the camera on program, white balance on auto, and saved the raw for complete freedom in post-production. I was able to leave the ISO at 200 and relied on the OM5 stabilizer for sharp images. Located at the mouth of the River Lagan, to the west of Belfast rises a range of high hills. Cave Hill Country Park to the north has many fine views of the city and Belfast Lock. By the afternoon it had clouded over, and whilst rain was forecast, I managed to execute an extensive walk in the dry. Woodland shots without a sky proved atmospheric, but for the big view I cut out much of the sky, as that would become the brightest part of the shot. I stayed overnight at a premier inn in Carrickfergus, a few miles down the road from Belfast. It rained during the night, ruling out any hope of a sunset or a sunrise over Belfast Lock. The Premier Inn overlooked the castle, a wonderful prospect, and after breakfast I captured the improving light as the rain front moved away over the Irish Sea. I returned to Belfast by train, and it was good to see that elements of the railway station's architecture had been preserved. I spent the morning at Titanic Quarter, walking from Lanyon Place Station via the river and over Queen Elizabeth Bridge as recommended by my guidebook. Titanic Belfast is the main draw, a showcase building resembling the hulls of four ships, which is a visitor attraction telling the story of the Titanic. From the outside, the building offers many photo opportunities, taking on a variety of shapes and profiles depending on where the photographer stands. Goliath and Samson, two massive gantry cranes can be seen in the distance from the Titanic and Olympic slipways. The walk continues to Great Light, a lighthouse no longer in service, here displayed because of its historical significance, to HMS Caroline, the UK's last surviving World War I Royal Navy cruiser, now converted into a museum. Much as I would have liked to explore further, time was fast running out, and I wanted to visit the cathedral, and it was some distance away. Couldn't find a bus, so it was a quick march back to Queen Elizabeth Bridge, and then on to Donegal Street. St Anne's Cathedral is not an ancient church. It was built when Queen Victoria granted city status on Belfast. The foundation stone was laid in 1899, but the cathedral was not completed until 1981, with a spire added in 2007. 
The overall style is Romanesque, with a nave and choir where you would expect to find them, along with transepts and sanctuary. I had the place to myself, therefore privileged to get a big view without people. This is a pity, as architecturally it is of great interest and importance, but it is some distance from City Hall and the shops. My visit to Belfast was a great success. Got the guidebook, by the way. I used to contribute to this type of publication years ago, but not so much uh, these days. I'm very much into uh, YouTube as uh, an alternative. I was able to do my visit to Belfast very cheaply because I booked everything up a month ahead. For example, using EasyJet, I got a single fare each way for £30, reserved seat by the window. If I waited till later, then it could rise to over £100. And the same applies, incidentally, to Premier Inn. So I had to play luck with the weather, and I had two glorious days. And when did it rain? Well, it rained overnight on the Tuesday night going into Wednesday. On Monday it rained, on Thursday after I left it also rained. So I was extremely fortunate. Maybe doing the sun dance earlier did help or something from up there. Thank you.